All right, what is up guys? So, today is going to be a little bit of a different video. First off though, you guys see the stash gains? This is so weird for me to grow my mustache. I'm shaving everything else. I usually don't have facial hair. Like, I usually don't grow out my facial hair because I don't like it, but I'm trying to see if I can maybe rock the stash on stage once it grows in. I don't know how it looks right now. We'll see in the next couple weeks. If it doesn't look good by like mid-August, I'm going to shave it. Because show is at the end of September. But, you guys, today's going to be a little bit of a different video. Today I'm going to be obviously talking about, as you see in the title, pros and cons of being contest shredded. Or contest like lean. Like how lean you get for a contest prep. Um, so yeah, you guys, we're going to get into this. This is kind of going to be like a raw video. It's not going to be edited that much. Um, just because I want to be completely honest with you guys and real. So, first things first, obviously, is one, energy levels. You're not going to be 100% like you always are. That's just normal with being in a contest prep because your calories get pulled down. Obviously, you're going to be carb depleted. Your fats are going to get pulled lower. Um, that's just how it is guys and in order to lose fat you have to be in a caloric deficit that's literally the only way to lose fat anyone that tries to go around the fact of you don't have to be no you have to be in a caloric deficit if you want to lose fat that's the only way that's literally the only way and to gain muscle you need to be in a caloric surplus simple facts guys and a lot of people don't get it and I really don't understand how people don't understand this um, but that's the main thing. Your energy levels are low. So that's one uh, That's one con of being contest shredded. And the closer you get to show, the more you feel like shit, the more you're just energy deplete. You don't have any energy at all. Um, you're just tired all the time. Like once I hit about the two week out mark, it's just, it feels like it's like a month. Like the last two weeks are the longest ever for contest prep. The longest two weeks of my life. So yeah, energy is just absolutely shit getting closer to contest prep, or contest. Like, the day of show is, like the closer you get to the day of show, the more you're gonna feel like shit, and that's just how it is. Because it, this is my thing, if you're not feeling like shit by like the time you're like five weeks out, four weeks out, you're doing something wrong. It's plain and simple. Second thing is sex drive. So, a lot of people don't really touch on, I mean, not that a lot of people don't touch on it. It's just people get uncomfortable with it. I used to get uncomfortable with it, but I'm like, I don't care now. Um, obviously, when your body fat gets to a certain percentage, you don't want to do anything of that matter. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, I'd say once your body fat gets around the 7% mark or lower, eh, maybe like the 6% mark. 6% mark. You just don't have the drive to do anything. Because think about it, guys. You're putting all your time and energy into the gym, into eating. And then whenever you're not doing that, you might have extra work. You might be personal training, working with clients. And you just want to sleep. So it's not that you don't have time for it. You don't have the energy to do it. And again, I'd say the last four to five weeks of contest prep, that's how I feel. Like I have no drive to do anything like that. And that's why it's hard for a lot of bodybuilders who have girlfriends because some of them don't understand why you can't put out. But that's the thing. If you get someone that's supportive and that's in the industry, they understand and they understand that. Again, that's one of the sacrifices you have to make is that you and your lady cannot do specific things. Or vice versa. If it's a bikini competitor with just a dude, you guys can't do stuff because your body fat's so low. And that's the thing too is you get someone supportive, they're gonna understand that okay, once your body fat's higher, you'll be able to get back to it. But yeah, that's one thing, sex drive definitely is slowly going downhill around the five week out mark. That's for me anyways, might be different for some people. Uh, but yeah, that's number two. Um, we'll get into some of the pros, so that's two cons. One of the pros is obviously, you look fucking good. Like, being contest shredded, it does not feel good getting that lean, but when you look that lean, you look pretty damn good. Um, 
especially when you got just a fucking shredded eight pack, your obliques are popping out, your shoulders are like capped and rounded, you're all veiny, vascular. Yeah, you look good. You look real good. That's one of the pros about it. You walk on the beach and people are like, oh my God, like this dude looks really good. But again, guys, um, a con about that is you cannot be contest shredded year round. It's not attainable to be that lean year round. It's not healthy to be that lean year round. But that is one of the pros is that you'll look really good. Super good. Um, another pro would be photo shoots, obviously. When you're looking that good, do a bunch of photo shoots. Um, post pictures on Instagram, do photo shoots, do videos on YouTube. Um, you might get more views and likes when you're that shredded. That's just how it is because that's like the, that's what people want to look like or that's like the perfect example of what people want to look like. So yeah, there's that. Another con being food. Food is on your mind so, so, so much, especially the closer you get to show. Like right now, my coach told me, he's like, you get a refeed Saturday after legs. I'm like, holy shit. Because I do sushi for my refeeds, and then I'll have one cookie. Just one. Instead of a cheat meal with like three cookies and a burger. Um, food gets on your mind so much, especially when you're getting deprived of it, and especially the closer you get to show. Um, like I said, now that I'm 11 weeks out, instead of four weeks out now, um, yeah, I'm going to get more food and stuff, because we're going to draw back, pull back, add more food in the diet. And when you hear that kind of stuff, you're like, oh my god, this is absolutely amazing. But yeah, guys, food, like, I don't care what anyone says. You can have, like, a relationship with food. Like, people, like, Greg, Dr. Greg on YouTube, he goes, eh, you can't have a relationship. No, you fucking have a relationship with food. It can be good or bad. Like, good relationship with food, meaning... You eat what you want, obviously in reason. You're not going to eat a bunch of shit. Or you have a bad relationship with food. Like some people develop eating disorders and they might eat a bunch of shit food and then go throw it up. That's a bad relationship with food. A good relationship with food is eat what you want. Like obviously you eat your meals throughout the day. If you want a cookie here and there, go ahead. That's not how it is on prep. Prep is strict. Follow the plan. When you get a cheat meal, you get a cheat meal. When you get a refeed, you get a refeed. Um, and that's the thing too is after shows some people just fall off and they can't go back on a normal diet um, and that's a problem but that's the thing is you just gotta think about it as eventually you're gonna get the food that you want whether it be in a cheat meal whether it be in a refeed or post show you're eventually gonna get the food you want it's not going anywhere it's gonna stay so that is definitely a con is that food is always on your mind Especially the closer you get to show, it's all you think about is food. Um, yeah. Not so much in your off-season, because you're eating so much in my off-season, but that's the thing is I love food. So it's like my off-season, I look forward to it as well. Yeah, food is a big thing. It's definitely, definitely a big part. Uh, another slight con is like clothes. When you get contest shredded, and you're obviously getting leaner and dropping body fat, your clothing size is gonna change. Like I usually wear an XL and that's like fitted, but right now my prep I'm wearing a large and it's fitted and that can really mess with your mind a lot cause you're like, oh my God, I'm getting smaller. When in reality you're not, you're just dropping fat and water weight. So yeah, make sure clothing wise, you have your off season clothes and then you have your pre-contest clothes. But then you get to the point, like if you're at like the pro level, you get to the point where you can wear the same clothes off season and pre contest. It's just pre contests are gonna look a little bit bigger on you just because you're losing body fat. So that's one slight con is the clothes. Alright guys, I'm gonna finish off on just one more con is that your strength. Your strength levels obviously deplete when you're calorie deprived. Your strength levels go like they're like right here and they start to go like this very slowly and then like the last three weeks it's fucking just a downhill slope of your strength is shit. Um, that's for natural people anyways. When you're using gear, yeah, your strength isn't all there, but it, it helps out a lot more, like more than people know. But being like a natural athlete, 
your strength levels go down a lot. Uh, you don't recover as well just because you don't have like the body fat. Um, your body fat's low, which means you're not going to recover as well. And on top of that, you're not getting enough. Not that you're not getting enough nutrients, it's just you could be getting more. And so your body's not going to recover as faster with that. And on top of that, you get cold really easily. Like, it's going to be in the 80s and 90s here, and towards the end of prep, I will be cold. It's just because your body fat's so low. But I just thought I'd throw this video up for you guys, um, especially something different besides just the series going on right now, because I'm going to try and come up with other videos for you guys to watch besides the series. But if you guys ever have any questions, feel free to leave a question in the comment section below, and I'll respond as fast as I can. Or follow me on Instagram. Down below, I got my username. It's just my first and last name, Hunter Sipovac. And then if you guys are interested in any online coaching, you can go ahead and DM me on Instagram or you can send me an email. Online coaching is $100 a month. I can send you guys everything that it entails. Or like I said, if you have any questions, just DM me. I'll usually respond faster to a DM than an email. But if you can't DM me, shoot me an email. Anyways, you guys, I hope you all enjoyed this video. And then next time you guys will see me will be in Road to Tahoe episode 7, which I'll be filming tomorrow, which is going to be a leg workout with my sushi feed. But I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.